Peace and blessings to you. Welcome to Cosmic Mystic. Today's reading is an ancestral reading. The energy that I read today will resonate with those who need the messages the most. This isn't a predictive reading, however, it may give probable outcomes. It's always wise to keep in mind that cartomancy is subjective and the outcomes will change as the energies around us shift and change. In this reading, I will shuffle into the energies multiple times in order to get as many messages for as many people as possible. Kindly remember, dear viewer, that I am not responsible for your emotions, nor am I responsible for how you choose to react to the reading. Thank you for your attention. Let's get started. So dear viewer, my camera's been acting out during this Mercury retrograde. There may be times in the reading when I cut out. I pray that I uh, see this sooner than later. So I'll do some clever editing when I get into post-production. And you know, my apologies in advance. You'll see your cards over here, okay? And here's how I'm gonna do this reading. This is not a pick a card reading. I want to make that very clear. It may appear that way in the way that I arranged the reading, but I assure you that it is not. With that being said, I am not going to take the time to timestamp this reading. For those of you who are um, really good souls and want some great karma, if you would timestamp the different um, scenarios, I'm going to do three of them. For your fellow viewers and your fellow commenters, that would be really awesome. Okay, for scenario number one, the first thing I want to bring to your attention is that I'm getting the collective energy of the grandmothers coming through, mothers, grandmothers, aunts, all of the matriarchal energy because I have the empress here. Um, so that is not going to be in your cards over here, but I did pull some additional cards from the top and bottom of the deck just to see whose energy is present here so that you could have a, a better understanding. I also have the Fool and the Four of Cups, and that would talk to me about those of you who have lost children whether it was like something like a miscarriage or, um, an actual physical child, whether they were youthful or an adult, any of you who have um, suffered the loss of, of a child. And then also the grandmothers, the aunts, um, the mothers, the matriarchal energies are predominantly here. Now in your reading, the fathers are really speaking and coming through, but these children and these mothers, these matriarchs also want you to know that they're present. So like I was saying, um, it's really the fathers that's speaking and the reading, but it's the, the children and the matriarchs who also want you to know that they're very present here in the reading as well. well but when I look at your reading as a spread, it is the, the patriarchs who are predominantly speaking in the reading itself. And with the Hierophant and the Emperor, it's really very strongly the grandfather energy, great grandfathers, and it's going back a long way with the Ten of Pentacles. So with the Chariot and the High Priestess here, you probably also have like ancient ancestors present as well, meaning those who you wouldn't know their names, you wouldn't know who they were or what they looked like, yet they are very aware of you, okay? So the cards I have in front of me are the Chariot, the Ten of Pentacles, the Emperor, the Two of Pentacles, the Hierophant, the Knight of Wands, the High Priestess, the Four of Pentacles, and the World. These patriarchal energies, with the support of the children and the matriarchs, they're very concerned about you, Scenario 1, when it comes to your finances. 
They feel like you are lacking financial literacy and they wish you would educate yourself. Whether it be you listening to YouTube videos, reading books, listening to lectures or podcasts, they wish you would find financial gurus, financial teachers whose methods are proven and true and that you would uh, take the time to learn to... Um, be more responsible with your finances. They also wish for you to travel more. And if you are planning any upcoming trips, they want you to know that everything will go just fine and that they're going to be present with you. So you need not worry about anything, especially for those of you who are traveling with a child or who are traveling alone. They want you to know that you will be safe, you will be just fine. You need to be wise and careful, but they want you to know that you're not alone, you are protected. For others of you, they are wishing that you would travel more, that you would plan a trip. Some of you haven't been home in a very long time, and you each have your reasons for staying away but they're asking you to revisit your homeland or the place of your birth, wherever is your uh, origination in the world, dear viewer. With the High Priestess, Two of Pentacles, Four of Pentacles, they would say that it's not necessary for you to reach out to anyone or to have any type of reconnection if you're not interested in that. You can still go home and uh, take in that energy for a time because something about it would be very healing for you and then for those of you who are not in toxic uh, family situations you know um regardless it's still good for you guys to to go back to your place of uh, ancestry or to your original point wherever you were born okay so that's the situations that i'm picking up on here because with those of you where it's the finances, um, they feel like you're just being frivolous with your money. And they, they're not really pleased with you and how you spend. And they wish you to be wiser and to also be more secretive, to not need to um, uh, expose your luxury. They, they can see what you cannot see and even though you may feel like it's your right, because with the cards here, you've definitely earned it and worked for it. They're requesting that you not do that at this time. They're uh, requesting that you adopt um, a lifestyle of minimalism, especially when it comes to what you post about yourself on social media, right? Because there's an energy here of being exploited and they're trying to protect you from that. Okay. So I have the moon, the temperance, the sun, the five of swords, the will of fortune, the star. We have the knight of cups, the tower, and the knight of pentacles. So they want to give you a forewarning, and it has a lot to do with how the planetary energies are going to be triggering and activating certain aspects within y'all's natal charts, okay? For those of you who resonate with this scenario, okay? Listen, they're giving you a forewarning that you are going to get in more, you're going to come more into alignment with that which is your destiny with temperance and the star and the tower and the will of fortune that's fate and destiny that is radical surrender as well dear viewer that means accepting uh your circumstances as they are knowing that no matter how they may appear to you it's wisest for you to take a neutral stance and to um to make your decisions and navigate your life from a neutral perspective because uh, change is radical in order to affect great change in your life you must first affect great chaos okay 
So as things shake up and, and maneuver themselves so that you can be put on a straight and narrow path to that whichever it is that you're getting ready to actualize over the next six months to a year, it's going to require some things to fall away from you, some relationships to fall away from you. It's going to require you to make some radical changes and adjustments in how you approach your day-to-day responsibilities and uh, the and the day-to-day actionable steps that you take that lead you to a greater goal because they're wanting you to know it's a process. And if you sabotage yourself, you're never going to reach the full potential of what you could. So they're saying um, that you need to fall back in some ways, that you need to learn and grow in, in some ways. It's going to be really important for you. I'm also picking up for those of you who resonate with this situation before I close it out that um, some of you are trying to affect great change in your life. You have some really lofty goals. It's wonderful because your ancestors feel that they're attainable. Things need to be written down and put on paper. And then you need to organize your life in such a way that every day you... Um, you have certain steps that you know you're going to take that are going to be implemented towards you achieving your goal. Also, I'm getting a lot of you need to um, strengthen your relationships with your daughters. And then, uh, or if you have a sibling, a female sibling. And then a lot of you also, um, you need to look into secondary sources of income multiple streams of income is going to be really beneficial to you i also feel that many of you who resonate with this pile are very creative and gifted and maybe you've also been trying to get someone to agree to do something with you or join up with you but they don't have the same drive or tenacity as you your ancestors are saying fear not don't fear going alone or you being the only one, that you can achieve this and do this on your own. Also, um, those of you who are gifted with um, the ability to make things, create things, um, actualize something into reality that wasn't there before, um, those of you who have the gift to make something very boring or very ugly beautiful, uh, you should consider opening up a business you come from a long line of very creative um, people who also dealt in a lot of handicrafts. So they were artists, sculptors, um, potters, masons, carpenters, etc. They made something from nothing and it was always very beautiful and it lasted and stood the test of time. This is in your blood, you know, so you would excel at this. So don't fear your future, okay? As I was drawing up your cards, uh, scenario number one, there's something that I noticed. I hope you're still present with me. Um, I noticed that there was um, some situations where some of you were involved in really abusive uh, circumstances where you were... Um, you're being, you know, subjected to various forms of violence. So uh, there was a lot of talk there about you um, formulating a plan in secret and then enacting that plan to get yourself out and also to take any children who are in the situation with you. Um, I saw that it was very important for you not to, um, not to leave anyone behind you have to take everyone with you if you're not the only one okay and keeping that secret meaning you don't tell anyone not even your closest ally what you're planning to do until after you've done it until after you've gotten you and, and your loved ones into a safe place you're going to be supported in doing this and it's to your um it's to your advantage to do so to begin to make that plan okay so now we'll get into uh, scenario number two.
Okay, for scenario number two, I have the Ten of Cups, the Knight of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles, Eight of Wands, Ace of Wands, the Sun, Ace of Swords, the Queen of Cups, and the Three of Wands. Okay, some of you are getting congratulations either on the birth of new children or the conception of children and on relocations. Anything to do with moving, purchasing a house, getting your very first apartment, your very first place also. For those of you who are going to resonate with the, with the advice that I shuffle into in a second, um, your ancestors are also talking about um, situations where you've been planning for something for a very long time. You would have either had to save a substantial amount of money and or you would have had to wait an extended period of time before you were able to take action on something. And either you're getting ready to or you recently have been able to take action towards whatever a goal or an aspiration that you've held for a long time. They're wanting you to know that you didn't do that on your own. <laughs> That they were very much so with you, but they also want to tell you that they're very much so proud of you as you're being very sovereign and, and independent in a way that other members of your family have not previously done. So you're something of a trailblazer in whatever it is that you're doing. You're the first one to do it in the family and you're the first one to do it successfully. And they're really giving you acknowledgement and props for that. Some of you are getting ready to start something... Um, could be education, could also be something to do where um, you had to plan it out for a long time or you're going to be called to communicate, especially um, when it deals with communications in front of large groups of people and also communicating for extended periods of time. So this could fall under the realm of something like giving a lecture giving a speech, explaining something, giving um, like some type of instructional um, video or something like that, okay? Uh, you're gonna be very successful with the travel. You're gonna be very successful with everything that you plan. And your communication, your speech especially, is going to be very uh, blessed and exalted. You're going to be exalted with the sun and the Ten of Cups here. Also, before I shuffle in, because the energy is drawing out now, um, some of you need to write this book or these memoirs or you need to write these songs. It's, it's asking you to stop delaying when it comes to the written word, whether it be creative, um, explanatory, or even if it's something like a memoir autobiography. You really have a lot of um, something very valuable to pass down. And I feel that if you would initiate the writing of something, it's going to open you up into opportunities and plans which you didn't initiate, well, which you didn't anticipate. That's, that's a better word. You never imagined that um, such opportunities would be presented to you. So they're asking you to take a chance. Now let's get into the advice and stuff they want to give you about your life. If you're resonating with this pile, okay? One. Two. Three. I have the King of Cups. The Eight of Swords, the Seven of Swords. I have the Chariot, the Seven of Pentacles, Nine of Wands, Three of Swords, Queen of Wands, and the High Priestess.
Listen, some of you have got conflicting. Um, you're you're in an environment that is is not in. Um, it's not in accordance with that which you're trying to accomplish and achieve. There's something in the energies around you which isn't conducive to your success. It's like you're going in one direction, but either your associations, the company that you keep is going in a different direction. Could also be that um, the children or the grandchildren are getting older and um, they're getting ready to go on with their own lives. And now you've got to reassess how you're going to go on with your life, you know? Because it's a bit of empty nester here as well. But the majority energy are, they're, they're talking about um, frustration with the company that you keep, with something in your environment, which is, something is inherently wrong there. It's like, it's blocking you from moving forward, but you don't even realize it. You're so invested in something, you refuse to give up because giving up would equal some some element of failure to you. When really, if you would release control and surrender the situation, your life would improve because a lot of the blocks that you're experiencing, it's, it's a form of protection because you can't come into your glory and to whatever it is that you're getting ready to be blessed with, you can't um, receive that until certain energies are no longer a part of you because they can't go where you're going. Not everyone can go with you. Uh, if some people transition into the next level with you, it's like crabs in a barrel. They're just going to bring you down and you'll miss out on something that could have been wonderful for you on account of surrounding yourself with jealous spirits jealous energies you see what i'm saying dear viewer okay you also have someone working against you here now i have the queen of wands and the high priestess i when i saw that i decided to pull cards from the bottom of the deck and i had and, and the top of the deck, and it had the star and the devil, death and the fool. So here's what it is, okay? Anyone who's doing any type of energy manipulation towards you, it's not working. Anyone who you, dear viewer, are doing any type of energy manipulation towards, no matter what it is, is not working. You're being asked to stop. Because what you, the change that you're trying to affect with magic. Okay, so you're being asked to stop because the change that you're trying to affect with magic or burning candles, energy manipulation, whatever it is, it's not working. This would be something that had been previously done, okay? If this, if uh, you're doing or started doing anything from the 16th of November forward, I don't really feel that this applies to you unless you're watching this reading in the future. But this would be stuff that you're doing yourself, not something that someone's helping you with. Um, it's not a lack of knowledge. You're very knowledgeable in what you're doing or whoever is doing energy manipulation with you is very knowledgeable in, in, in what they're doing. The thing about it is that you can't um, affect someone's destiny. So what's fated to happen is going to happen regardless of um, how someone tries to have an effect on that. So what are some examples of this? You want to bring your ex back to you. You are praying for this. You uh, maybe see um, an, an enemy doing well or an enemy sees you doing well and they are praying for, for your downfall or you're praying for someone else's downfall, right? None of that shit's flying. Uh, the universe is blocking it because you can't affect change on someone's destiny, something that's fated to happen. So be very careful um, because anything you're sending out, it's instant karma. No matter what your beliefs are, it's evident in your environment. So you have to acknowledge it one way or the other. And if anyone's doing this to you, it's instant karma. So it's very important that you know that you are a child of the universe and that you are protected. 
And it's also very important for you to know that um, you don't want to uh, manipulate energy unless you feel like you need to defend yourself or, or you've been harmed, um, you know, or you feel like you need a, a clearing, you know, you can take things to the crossroad. But, you know, I'm just saying, you know, throwing just for the the desire to throw, you're not you're not affecting any change. So save your energy and um, invest it into higher pursuits. And if someone's doing that to you, they're very soon to be humbled. So they'll be investing their energy into higher pursuits as well. Okay. Okay, scenario number three, the cards that I have for you are the Tower, the Fool, the Nine of Cups, the Six of Cups, the Emperor, the Star, the Eight of Cups, the Two of Wands, and the Eight of Wands. I also have the Queen of Swords and the Six of Wands, the Knight of Swords and the Ace of Pentacles. Um, the main energy that's speaking here for you are your ancient ancestors, those who you didn't know. You don't know what they look like. You don't know what their names were. You are not aware of them, but they are very much so aware of you, dear viewer. Also, very strong energy coming in are um, the energies of sons, uncles, brothers, and fathers, okay? I'm getting that from the Six of Cups, the Fool, and the Emperor. Also, you have a supporting energy here with Queen of Swords, Knight of Swords. You may have had um, a very difficult energy with these masculine energies. Um, you may have had a very difficult relationship with these masculine energies. You also may have had a very difficult relationship with a very particular matriarch in your life, which is why it's coming out as the Queen of Swords. So um, if you didn't if someone transitioned to the ancestral realm, you didn't end on good terms with them. Everything's cool and, and everything's all good now. And they want you to know that their energy is coming through to support these uh, patriarchs and what they have to say to you. Okay. So. If you're resonating with this scenario, you would have just gotten some excellent news. Something very um, auspicious or fabulous would have just happened to a child. There also is going to be the announcements of new children coming into the family. But some, uh, some of the youth in the family would have had a really important uh, event happen to them. Something that would um, garner praise and congratulations. Okay, also, if you're resonating with this pile, I'm picking up the energy that your relationship with this patriarch, whether it be a son, a brother, a father, or an uncle, or a grandfather, this would have been someone, especially when you were a child, you would have, um, or when they were a child, depending on the relationship dynamic, um, when you were a child, you would have looked at this patriarch with awe-inspiring energy, not just because they were your example, but because they would have been doing things which um, you witnessed, which were awe-inspiring. You weren't viewing um, your friends, dads, uncles, um, grandfathers doing such things. Maybe you only saw such things on TV or, you know... Um, it wasn't very common, whatever this patriarch was involved in, but um, they had a very inspiring energy and you would have thought the world of them. They also would have been very domineering, very opinionated. They could have worked in law enforcement, been a firefighter, a soldier, some type of military involvement. They also could have been an athlete or a fighter. They may have also been a veteran. Um, could have also been very adept with firearms, very good shooter, um, to the point of being a, a sniper. Also very good with sharp weapons, such as blades, um, various forms of daggers. They may have also been skilled in archery. 
this may have also been someone who was interested in being a pilot or flew planes as well. Something to do with aviation, even if they were a mechanic and they didn't fly, they would have had um, an, 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 an ad, adept knowledge of uh, planes. Also, spiders may be very um, important to this person. I want you to live. I don't want to kill you. I'll find you later. Maybe put you outside. Or my cat will find you first. If Habibi finds you, that's the end of your life, Mr. Spider. Okay, it's just, it's highly unusual because I'm a super clean freak to the point of being like obsessive compulsive with being clean. So for the spider to just pop up like that is pretty interesting. So spiders may be relevant or important, okay? Um... If it's not, you may want to look up the spiritual meaning of spiders, okay? So, um, when this person passed away, there's a very high probability that they either passed away suddenly or violently. Now, if this is a situation where this is a son or a brother, um, it would be a sibling, a boy, or a son, um, your son, um, since they were little, you would have looked at them as if they were um, a very gifted child, exceptionally gifted. And you would have known that the child had a very bright and um, awe-inspiring future ahead of them. And during the child's life, or during your brother's life, he did accomplish quite a great deal. Some of it is obvious. Um, there's accolades and awards that would have been um, garnered as a result of their good work. For others of you, it's not so obvious because you weren't so aware of their private relationships. Um, so you are not fully aware of how many lives they impacted, but they impacted an exceptional amount of, of people's lives. They really helped to save a lot of lives, inspire a lot of lives. They did a lot of good while they were here. Now, no matter who this male energy is to you, the death would have been one of two things, very sh quick and shocking, um, or it would have been um, violent. I'm picking up um, guns. I'm picking up um, trauma to the head, blunt force trauma to the head. I'm picking up the energy of aneurysms and strokes. I'm also picking up um, the energy of being kicked in the head or um, asphyxiation, not being able to breathe, suffocating. I'm also picking up energy with the neck, chest as well, injury to the chest or injury to the spine. For some of you, I'm picking up on, on a masculine energy who committed suicide which is a huge thing and just goes to show my spiritual growth because I refuse to read into um, suicides, but it's coming out here. So my ancestors are showing me something right now. So I want to thank you and allowing me to do this reading for you as it's honoring me and helping me to um, increase upon my gift and not be so afraid to read into very, um, very sensitive and volatile energies. Previously, I was really nervous about reading suicides. I don't like because some of the energies are, are intranquil and I don't like to work with intranquil spirits. Um, I don't mind it, but I prefer not to. So this is really amazing that this is coming out right now because it feels very harmonious, benevolent. So if you've been concerned about this sibling, the son, this Mel, if, especially if they died in such a violent way, they are totally good now with the Nine of Cups and the Star. They're really good. They're, they're perfectly okay. They also want you to know that it was very quick. I know that sounds so cliche, um, but this is not a mediumship reading. I'm purely reading the cards. I'm not um, bringing in any energies myself. So um, with the Six of Cups, the Tower, and the Eight of Cups, it would say to me that it was very quick, especially with the Fool here. So if you're worried about any prolonged suffering, they didn't suffer. Um, it went, like, really fast. 
they knew that something was happening and something was wrong, but the they didn't get a chance to process that they were transitioning, that they were dying. So there, there's it's a lot of them wanting to communicate that to you. A lot of them were also agnostic or atheist in their life. They wouldn't have, there's the spider again. He came right back. Okay, dear, I am going to take you outside because I want you to live and thrive. Climb onto the car. Climb onto the car. Don't be scared. Oh, he jumped off. Listen, if my cat finds you, that's it for you, man. You better come with me. Let me save your life. I'm trying to tell you. Okay, go on. Be free then. My cat's going to get you. Anyway, I tried, guys. I tried to save it before Habibi eats him. Okay, you're my witness. <laughs> so anyway, um, <sighs> spiders are very relevant to you. Anyway, um, many of them would have been atheist or agnostic. They didn't believe in an afterlife. They didn't believe in reincarnation. They didn't believe in a multiverse. They didn't believe in an ancestral realm. And they surely didn't believe that when they transitioned, they would have a choice whether to go into a new timeline or to rest in, in the realm of the ancestors or, you know, to do something different because we have options when we transition. However, um, they, they're like, it's real. I, it's it's you know, life continues on. When you close your eyes to this world, you continue on. You open your eyes to the next world. Um, they want you to know that, okay? So if some of you have been wondering about them, they're doing good. They're shocked because they didn't believe a lot of it while they were living. But they're amazed at uh, what they see now. There's also the energy of a very young child may have died in the womb or within a few months of uh, being born may have had some issue with obstruction of the bowels or something within the torso wasn't formed completely so the child wasn't able to sustain their life without the help of machines or anything outside or they would have been underdeveloped and they wouldn't have been able to sustain their life outside of the womb um, this child is with, they're, they're bringing this child through in, in the reading. They want you to know that, that the family has the child, okay? Also, some of you may have chosen to um, have an abortion, and they're asking you to absolve yourself of your guilt because you've already been forgiven, and the child is okay. The family has the child. Whew, powerful. Okay, now let's shuffle into it. You'll know now that would have let you know if I'm reading your energy. So now we'll shuffle into it. See what your ancestors want to say to you. For those of you who resonate with this scenario. One. Two. Three. Okay, I have the Four of Pentacles, the Six of Wands, and the Queen of Swords. I also have the King of Pentacles, the Eight of Swords, the Chariot, the Five of Pentacles, the Hermit, and the Four of Cups. Okay, for all of you um, who resonated with this pile, you've been going through some sort of dilemma. It's either a dilemma to deal with the path that you're currently on, whatever your, your, your aim for your final destination is. Could be that you've been invested in a certain area of study or in a certain career for a very long time, and now... Um, it's beginning to create blocks and delays for you. Could also be affecting your finances. And it's time for you to shift your energy and, and move into something new. 
but you're refusing to allow this process to take place. So your ancestors are coming through and asking you to release control and to surrender um, your desires to your destiny because a lot of what you've been working on, invested in, what you've intended for yourself is not exactly what's intended for you. So there's an energy of getting realigned into uh, or onto that path, which is going to take you towards your divine destiny. You, your course is being shifted at this time. So if you're wondering why the confusion about um, your choices and the direction that you're going in, and if you're also concerned about your finances and why it seems like you have a lot of financial blocks, or you're not able to save money, as soon as you get it, it goes. It's because whatever you're currently involved in is no longer, it no longer needs to be a part of your life. Like it's it's okay for you to know that you can start fresh and you can reevaluate things. And just because you've always done something one way or you've always been invested in something, um, it doesn't mean you have to keep doing that. You can always go back to the drawing board and start again. Um, any fear that you have, you know, it comes from you. It's not coming from anything outside of you. There's nothing outside of you that's blocking you. It's more so your refusal to let go and to go towards something new, to go towards where you're being drawn because you would have a desire of pulling towards something, but you refuse to allow yourself to fully um, invest into that, dear viewer. Either you're fearing failure, you're fearing half having to restrict your finances while you transition, you know, um, because you may be wanting to start something brand new or go into a completely new area of study. Maybe you're also wanting to bring two opposing viewpoints together to form, an, uh, like, to, to synthesize something new. And, you know, there's a lot of fear about doing that because it may be considered taboo. But really, you're not going to get any ease, especially mentally. And especially with your with um, seeing forward movement in, in your life and in, in your endeavors and what you apply yourself to until so you're willing to release the past and let what's done be done. And until also you're willing to stop self-sabotaging so that you can embrace this new endeavor, which your ancestors are saying you need to go towards. They're asking you to turn your back to the past and only focus on that which is is uh future forward and and because your present may not reflect um the the highest ideal of what you wish your reality to be dear viewer um they're asking you to really be future forward this is heavy law of attraction here as well because um it's kind of like a fake it till you make it energy so if you're focusing on an ideal future you'll begin to make the changes in the present that will align you with that. But whatever you're currently doing or have been doing, it's no longer viable for you. And you want to begin to um, explore new areas of study, new ways of being, new ways of eating, um, new ways of thinking as well. Also putting out new goals, new manifestations, no longer willing to invest in drama or conflict and in relationships which are not serving you. Some of you are about to get new cars. If you've been hoping for that, uh, uh, upgraded transportation is coming. Also, there's an energy of you needing to do what's best for your children and think about your children first if you have them or, or grandchildren. They're asking you to be more responsible. And they also want you to know that because of the manner in which they passed away, they didn't get blocked. 
They're not in some like hellfire or void and they're not in tranquil either. They're okay. They're with the family. Um, they were able to work through their issues in the ancestral realm, the issues that they were unable to work through here, which may have played a part in their, um, what you would have interpreted as their untimely death. But if you study their natal chart, especially if you study uh, where Mars was transiting at the time of their death, it'll tell you a lot about how their death was their destiny, as hard as that may be to accept. Okay, dear viewer. Um, they want you to go and do some type of expanded education, like... Go to a conference, listen to lectures, or go back to school. Take some classes. Even if it means just to learn a new language, some type of academia they feel would be really good for you at this time, okay? And they're also telling you to keep your business to yourself. Stop telling your business to everybody. Everyone doesn't need to know what's going on with you. Okay, thank you. Dear viewer, thank you for allowing me the gift of reading for you. Thank you for your likes, your comments, and your subscribes. I pray that you and I have the Midas touch in all that we think, in all that we speak, and in all that we do. I pray that our ancestors and our guardians always be near to us. Until we meet again, Goddess bless all and all the best, Ashe.